and we're back for Isaiah 61. Um, this is like a hidden gem here um, in chapter 61. So um, <clears throat> going to be referencing a lot to Luke 4. Um, so we'll just get into it. Um, verses 1 and 2. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison of the prison to those who are bound, which you know that this is uh, talking about Jesus' first coming. So, um, and realize this is Isaiah talking about Jesus' first coming, right? So, um, when he talks about to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. He's talking about Sheol, okay? Um, before Christ died, um, you went to Sheol, and it was divided into Hades, into Abraham's bosom. Good people went to Abraham's bosom. The bad people went to Sheol. When Christ died, he went down to preach to the captives. He took everybody in Abraham's bosom up to heaven with him, and he left the people in Hades there. And people still go there and they await judgment right so um verse two to proclaim the acceptable year of the lord and there's a comma there okay so pay attention to that because the next part says and the day of vengeance our god to in the day of vengeance of our god to comfort all who mourn right so i'm going to stop here and then i'm going to read um Luke 4, uh, 16 through 30, because this is the only way it's going to make sense to you. So, um, Jesus rejected at Nazareth. So Jesus is in his hometown, um, and they reject him. They, they're going to try to kill him. So. so he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and his custom as it, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and he stood up to read and he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and to recover the sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And then he stopped. And then he closed the book, and he gave it back to the attendant and sat down. Right? So, if we go back here... Jesus stopped at, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, comma. He stopped at that comma. He did not read in the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn, right? Okay, so we'll go back to Luke. And it says that he closed the book and he gave it back to the attendant and he sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. So all bore witness to him and marveled at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is this not Joseph's son? So then he said to them, You will surely say, you will surely say this proverb to me, Physician, heal yourself. Whatever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in our country, in your country. Um, then he said, Assuredly, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you truly, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, and there was a great famine throughout all the land. But to none of them was Elijah sent except to Zephyrath in the region of Sidon, to a woman who was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elisha, the prophet, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. Verse 28, so all those in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath and rose up and thrust him out of the city, and they led him to the brow of the hill in which their city was built, that they might throw him down over the cliff. Then passing through the midst of them, he went his way. So, why were they so outraged? That is, that is the gem that's tucked in here. So, they are so outraged because, first of all, he stops and he doesn't read the second part of that and he tells them that this is today is fulfilled in their ears so um and i'll just read from my notes here um he went to the synagogue on the sabbath and he stood to read he's handed the scroll and then he stops okay um 
but he didn't read all of verse 2. He stopped at the comma after saying to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, um, and he did not read the rest of verse 2, and the reason for that is because verse 2 was the fulfillment of his second coming. Everything that he read before that was the fulfillment of his first coming, which is the reason why he was there, and that's why he said, and today this is fulfilled in your ears. He didn't read the second part because the second part is yet to come, and that's what we're waiting for. So, um, <clears throat> so the day of vengeance of our God is what we are waiting for, um, our kinsman redeemer. Jesus is our kinsman redeemer. He is our avenger of blood. He is coming back to avenge us, um, to proclaim, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book and he sat down and said to them all, today the scripture is fulfilled in your ears. So he is coming back to, for vengeance in his second coming. First coming was all what he read beforehand. So then when he says this and they basically say, you know, like they is, are you not Joseph's son? Like they hear all the stuff that he's done in Capernaum. So they're going to want him to do his mis miracles there. And he basically tells them no, that he's not going to do them, but that's not the only reason that they wanted to kill him. So, um, so then, um, he says, uh, hold on, let me find a place here. Okay, and then it says that they tried to fly, throw him off the cliff after that because he said that he wouldn't do any works there um, in his hometown. Um, and also because these Jews realized something that you and I, just reading this scripture, wouldn't realize. <clears throat> in that the widow that Jesus was talking about, um, that Elijah healed during the famine, that he was sent to during the famine, um, Zapharath in the region of Sidon. Um, she was a widow. She was a Gentile. Okay. And then he goes on to say that um, the lepers that were in Israel at the time of Elisha, that none of them were cleansed except Naaman, the Syrian. Okay. Another Gentile. So this is why, this is another reason why they want to kill him. So he not only says, I'm not going to do any works here, but he says, don't you realize that the only person that Elijah was sent to during the famine was a Gentile woman, and the only person that Elisha was sent to during, uh, or a leper, or whatever, was um, out of all the Jewish lepers, he healed Naaman, the Syrian, a Gentile leper, right? <clears throat> so he's bringing this up to them. And they're outraged. They're filled with rage, right? So they want to throw him off a cliff and kill him. Um, <clears throat> so, um, let me catch up on my notes here. Jesus was talking about was a Gentile, not a Jew. So the reason they were outraged is because they didn't believe, the Jewish people at that time, they didn't believe that Gentiles could be saved. Um, so Jesus made this note to them. <laughs> And he, and he brought it up, and of course they're filled with wrath, and they're going to try to kill him, right? So, um, this is, what Jesus was preaching here was awful to them, because basically um, he was letting them know that um, God will have mercy on who he will have mercy on, and he, they, you know, they're outraged because they think that, you know, they're God's chosen people. And if he'll save Gentiles, then that takes away from them, right? So, <clears throat> so he's saying um, God has sovereign selection, basically. And God will have mercy on who he will have mercy on. And so um, Jesus is making the point that, you know, even in the Old Testament, testament that god can choose who he will and he picked two examples where he did and they were gentiles uh, and they were the only ones saved only ones saved um during this time so it totally violated their concept of being god's chosen people 
And that's why they were so filled with wrath. And they were going to throw him off the cliff and kill him. And so <clears throat> that is the gem tucked in here. That is the nugget. So what we'll do now is we'll go on to verse 3. And we're just going to finish this up, verse 3 through 11, because this these are all kingdom blessings um, and blessings in the millennial reign. Um, Isaiah highlights them for us here, and um, we'll see that, um, you know, they're for the church and for Israel, and at the end, um, we'll see where the bride is, so we'll just go ahead and finish this up here. Verse 3, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, which is one of the things um, uh, that I love, is the way that Isaiah puts these things oil the oil for joy the oil of joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they may be called trees of righteousness the planting of the lord that he may be glorified I just love the way that that is worded and they shall rebuild the old ruins they shall raise up the former desolations and they shall repair the ruined cities the desolations of many generations strangers shall stand and feed your flocks the sons of the foreigner shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers but you shall be named the priests of the lord they shall call you the servants of our god you shall eat with riches of the gentiles and their glory you shall boast so gentiles here is more like foreigner not like gentile as in like we're gentiles um but um, notice that it says, but you shall be named the priest of the Lord. Kings and priests are what we've been promised by God um, in millennial reign. Verse 7, instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. And instead of confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double everlasting joy shall be theirs. <clears throat> For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery for burnt offering. I will direct their work in truth and will make them an everlasting covenant. Their descendants shall be known among the Gentiles and their offspring among the people. All who see them shall acknowledge them that they are the posterity whom the Lord has blessed. Verse 10, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation he has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. We are the bride. Verse 11, for as the earth brings forth its bud, as the garden causes the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. All right, so those are the kingdom blessings. Um, for the millennial reign from God uh, that he spoke through Holy Spirit um, to Isaiah for our reading. And that sums up chapter 61. So we'll see you back here for 62.